How are you feeling? You got John Ranks here talking about the Tengen Nintendo games. These are the unlicensed games uh, from kind of like Atari, and they even have a few Sega games on Nintendo, which I thought was mind-blowing back in the day. I was like, how do you put a Sega game on a Nintendo system? Well, they're unlicensed, and they look a little different because they were able to get around the uh, lockout chip, which you can see right here. Uh, this guy here is from Nintendo. This is their kind of like anti-piracy uh, region locking thing that you can do with something like this. And this is from Nintendo. However, the good people at Tengen called up the copyright office and said, hey, we need the uh, schematic for that. And they sent it. Um, <laughs> there, there's more to the story than that, but that's how they were able to uh, make these games that work on Nintendo systems. So even though they were unlicensed, you still saw them on the shelf along with your other favorite Nintendo games we're going to check them out right now. We're going to look at all 20 of them and see where they rank on this list. And I like the new stuff too, but I'm a huge old school gamer, so make sure you're subscribed. I got about two videos coming out every week, at least. Starting off with Afterburner. Afterburner was a cool game in the arcade, again, from Sega. You can play a Sega game on a Nintendo system. Mind-blowing. Um, wasn't great. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it got the job done. Um, I loved the arcade version. I just loved how it looked. Loved the arcade stick and all that. It's all right. Um, the NES version's a C. I was a huge fan of Alien Syndrome, again in the arcade and again from Sega. Um, and the NES version, I thought, played pretty decently. I mean, it has that kind of overworld map. You have to save your people. Um, I like the fact that you can get your weapon upgrades. A little clunky on the NES, but... It got the job done, um, and I, I'm going to put it as a B. Fantasy Zone's an interesting one, because Fantasy Zone came out in Japan under Sunsoft, and the Famicom version's way better than the NES version that we got. It's like two different versions. It's pretty pretty crazy. But the NES version still, it's great. I love Fantasy Zone, because you just, you just fly back and forth and, you know, shoot the enemy bases and get your weapon upgrades that you can pay for. Big bosses. I mean, it's, it's a fun, cute game. Um... But, you know, the NES version that we got, the Tengen version, it, the Famicom one to me is an A, but the NES one uh, from Tengen to me is a B. A lot of fun to be had with Gauntlet. Uh, Gauntlet is just an old school classic, four player, except for the NES version was only two player. The second one, which was not from Tengen, uh, had the four player tap. It's a maze crawler. There's, there's like over a hundred levels or something. I don't know how many levels. I remember playing this game a ton and never beat it. Never played it that long, I guess. Hmm. I mean, it was simple for its time, and the NES version got the job done. I'll, I'll put it as a B. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Uh, what can I tell you about this game? When I see photos of it, and uh, think about, about playing it for, uh, on the NES, it came from the arcade, there was an arcade version too, uh, but think about the NES version, I'm like, ah, it wasn't that great. But when I play it with the controller in my hand, I, I enjoy myself. It's actually a decent game. Um, but it's decent, not like superb. Um, but it's not terrible. So it's also a C. Clax came out at a great time where it was during the time of attitude and stuff like that and things were kind of quirky and crazy and wacky. Um, but it came out right around, you know, after Tetris. You know, after the popularity of Tetris, I should say. Where people are like, I love Tetris, give me more of that, please. And um, and they came out with Clax, and Clax is fun. I'm, it's a decent game. It's, it's one of those games like Tetris. You don't need to have the best graphics to play it anyway. In fact, Clax is the last officially licensed Atari 2600 game. Uh, <laughs> I told you what era this was. Uh, Clax, uh, I mean, I like playing it. I still go back to it every once in a while. I like playing a little bit. Um, to, to me, it's a B. It's hard to put Pac-Man as anything other than S, because it's Pac-Man. And the NES version plays, especially going from the Atari Pac-Man to the NES Pac-Man, and here's here's what Pac-Man's supposed to look like. It's not arcade perfect, sure, but it gets the job done. And I'm not as much of a Pac-Man guru to let you know like what ghosts do what and what the different strategies are. Um, I just kind of, I just kind of shoot for the moon on this one. But it's it's Pac-Man, and um, I mean I don't know. I, I I feel obliged to put it at least as an A. And, I mean, I, I still play Pac-Man today, so I'll put Pac-Man. It's not superb, but I'll, I'll put Pac-Man as an A. And if I'm putting Pac-Man as an A, I gotta put Miss Pac-Man as an A as well. Why is it not an S? Well, good question. For me, it seems like I gotta put the S's as the above and beyond exemplary perfection of what an NES game should be. You know, it's like there, there are arcade games that came out, you know, almost 10 years prior, now on the NES. So it's like, well, of course you can do that. I mean... <laughs> the NES was probably hard, you know, powerful hardware than what they were using in the arcade. I don't know. Nah, Miss Pac-Man's a day. And Pac-Mania, thank you for trying. They're trying something new with Pac-Man. It's like, hey, we're gonna bring back Pac-Man in a fun 3D way. You can jump. 
Uh, there's a lot more ghosts on screen at the time. <sighs> and it's just, it's just, I don't know, it doesn't have the same charm. It doesn't have the same feel as Pac-Man, but it's still decent. Um, I'm putting Pac-Man as a C. We got the RBI Baseball Games, which stands for Runs Batted In. In fact, this is the game that taught me what RBI stood for, because I never really cared for baseball much uh, when I was growing up. But the cool thing is the baseball games, the baseball video games, are actually pretty fun. You can figure them out pretty well, pretty easy to control, pretty fun games. And I played more, well, there's three of them. <laughs> and I played more of the first one of the RBI games than the other ones. And I'm gonna put, this is gonna be weird, I'm gonna put RBI Baseball as a B, right? I just love the cutesy, cartoony, kinda super deformed figures that you play as. And then RBI Baseball 2, that's when it went to more of a traditional graphic and not the cutesy, you know, and like, I should've stayed with cutesy, that's what that was great about it. Um, and they didn't. Um, and it plays, it still plays decently, it still plays kind of the same. This looks a little different, um, but I don't know. You're not supposed to say graphics are everything, it's all about gameplay. But it didn't have the same feel to it. I don't know, I'm gonna put RBI Baseball 2 as a C. And then RBI Baseball 3, to me it looked like the same game. <laughs> it was like a... <laughs> so I'm gonna put that one right next to RBI Baseball 2. RBI Baseball 3 as well as a C. You know, I had a lot of fun with Roadrunner. You can play as the Roadrunner, avoid the coyote, you know, Wily Coyote, I should say. You gotta stop by and eat all the bird seed and um, you gotta kind of trick Wily Coyote to getting hit by the cars or you might get hit yourself. And um, if you move too far off screen, that's what I kind of liked about it. It's like, it's a chase, but not a race. Um, like if you move too far off screen, then Wily Coyote like uses his Acme rocket boots to uh, speed up to get to where you are. So you gotta have that kind of nice balance uh, between that. I had a lot of fun with this one. I'll put it as a B. Rolling Thunder is a game I really like in the arcade. Um, and when it came out on the NES, I thought it played fine for what it was. I thought I thought it played pretty well. Um, big fan of Rolling Thunder. When you go back to it today, it doesn't feel the same. You know what I mean? It's like I, just, I remember it's, it was something new at the time, where you could like you know jump up, or I mean maybe just because the characters had that really skinny graphic to them. <laughs> I'm not sure you can go inside the doors and get weapon upgrades and all that. Uh, big fan of Rolling Thunder, um, and I'm still gonna put it as a B though. Shinobi is a great example of a game I loved in the arcade. Um, had it for the Sega Master System, and that played pretty well. And it came out for the NES by Tengen, and it hurt my feelings. Uh, this was like, it's it's basically the same. Uh, it just didn't feel the same. Man, oh, poor Shinobi. Um, fun platformer, plays a ninja. Um, Save the kidnap kids or whatever, but on the NES, not not a not a good look, man. Um, I'm, I'm I'm putting Shinobi as a D, not quite an F because it's not ridiculously terrible, but not great. Skull and Crossbones might be the more obscure title out of all the Tengen games for the NES. Skull and Crossbones may be the one that's a little bit more obscure, um, not more rare, but just more obscure. That's that's like you see that one, you're like, I never heard of this one. Where did this one come from? Um, and probably for good reason. It's a terrible game. Uh, <laughs> I apologize if you were the one who made this game. Um, I don't know if you were on a deadline, or you're doing someone a favor, or, <laughs> or what came about. Um, but it's, uh, it, it's, it's not great. Uh, it's Skull and, I mean, as much as Skull and Crossbones is fun to collect for, um, I'm putting Skull and Crossbones gameplay-wise as an F. Super Sprint's a lot of fun. Um, I like Super Sprint uh, quite a bit. It's, I'm not a huge racing game fan, but this is a racing game I could play. Um, it's just... Kind of, I mean, of course, much more fun in the arcade when you have the steering wheel, um, but plays decently on the NES, and it's fun just to fun just to have. You know, it's all right. It's um, it's a B. And then we have Tetris, and I don't need to tell you the story about the Tengen version of Tetris versus the NES Tetris and the copyright and the lawsuit and the whatever. Um, I remember as a child going to the store with my mom and seeing stacks of <laughs> no pun intended stacks of Tetris on the shelf, and this is the Tengen version. And I remember telling my mom, "That's that's the game I want. I want that's the, I want I want that one, please." Um, couldn't get it. Had to wait for my birthday. Had to wait for Christmas. Um, but I want a Tetris. And I remember seeing the Tengen version at the time. Didn't know that there was a difference, really. Um, but I knew I but I played that in the arcade, and I loved it, and I wanted that one for the NES. And then when Christmas rolled around, I got the NES version of Tetris because that was the version that was out at the time, right? Still Tetris, and I have a lot of fun with the NES version. Probably more nostalgic for that one than any other version of Tetris. However, this one has two player. The other one doesn't. That's what makes it better. 
<laughs> and it's fine. It's Tetris. You can't go wrong. Um, it's... Is it an S? I, I'm going to put Tetris. I'm going to put the Tinga Tetris as an S. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's Tetris. I mean, come on. Tubin can be a fun game. I liked Tubin. I liked Tubin in the arcade because they had the, the the way the buttons worked, where you had like you know like paddle left and paddle right. If you hit both at the same time, that's when you move forward. And the NES version doesn't really have that, unfortunately, which is too bad. On the NES version, you just use the D-pad to move around, and then your A and B buttons uh, launch your your cans as weapons um, through the angles. And it's uh, again another one of those examples. Arcade version great. The NES version. Uh, needed some help, and I'm putting Tubin as a C. Because again, it's it's still fun. It's still a fun game, just comparing it to the arcade version, which I totally shouldn't do. I just need to compare these to themselves. But, yeah, I'm, I'm putting Tubin as a C. Vindicators is a game I should like. I just can't control it very well. Um, it's almost... Vindicators, to me, felt like, you know, super combat. Like, I loved combat, and now you're in this high-tech world. I don't know. <laughs> I'm coming up with my own storyline now. Uh, I, I didn't care for Vindicators much at all. I'm putting it as a D. And that's my list, and I'd love to see yours. You can see a link in the description below on how you can rank your own Tengen NES games. And if you happen to do it, if you post it on social media, make sure you tag me in it. I would love to see it. If this is your first time here, I've already done several other ranking videos too from Capcom, Konami, uh, Black Box NES games, uh, LJN, and so much more. So make sure you check out these other videos too, and uh, I'll see you real soon. Always new videos coming out.